The 1960s saw boat anglers come into deal in their hordes at this period of time and fish were plentiful. The year was around 1967. We were fishing with rod and lines just to the southeast of the bank buoy. It was discovered that there was a mussel bed in the area and the angling boats were landed in place in large numbers. I myself was fishing from Dill commercially and also involved with taking out angling parties. This was when my father had his boats, the fairway and fair chance opposite the Timeball Tower. All through the summer of 1967, anglers were taking home good catches of place and at night, after having taken out an angling party, I resumed trawling the grounds and caught and landed many boxes of prime place. Prices weren't good, but it put food on the table in bad times. The winter nearly always followed with good cod fishing and we never had to venture far out to sea to get good catches in those days. Large cod were plentiful from the shore to the bank boy about a mile out. The following year, in 1968, it was discovered that another bed of mussels had formed south of Kingsdown, about one mile out. Tides were strong there and the water was deep at this position and once again anglers were having a prolific time. When the tide eased you could always, at some point of the day, get onto the ground and on a nip tide fish it all day. But it was too good to last. One day a trawler from Folkestone appeared on the scene and towed through the mussel beds. The angling boats did their best to drive him off. Fred Upton, who at that time was the fishery representative for Deal in Warmer, informed the trawler skipper that he was ringing the local bylaw officer. He had the power to immobilise boats over 40 feet trawling inside the three mile limit at Deal. But each day more trawlers appeared. They used to trawl around the angling boats all day and when the angling boats returned to the beach about 4pm the trawlers would move in and trawl the area where the thickest of the place were. I myself couldn't trawl this area in my boat the fairway as our trawl was hand hauled and the tides and depth of the water made it very hard work. So we used a trap line for the place. This is dropping a line into the seabed with about 40 hooks attached to it and every half an hour it was hauled, the fish taken off, it was rebaited and the whole system being repeated throughout the day. We caught a lot of place like this and at times it was more rewarding than trawling. The Dill boatmen eventually got together and were advised to form an association before they could get any legal action taken over this infringement of the local bylaw. The chairman and committee were elected and most boatmen became members. I, being mainly commercial, never joined the association as this would have brought an end to me earning a living from Dill Beach. Summons were taken out against the folks and trawler owners and at a sitting in Dill Magistrates Court the trawler owners were eventually fined for breaking the law. This meant the deal in warmer boatmen had won, but it was only the first round. The boatmen later learned that the Kent and Essex Sea Fishery Committee were going to reconsider the restriction and the size of trawlers fishing offshore at Deal. The boatmen's committee got together with the Deal Town Council and the case was to be considered at a public inquiry. The Dill Town Council instructed a legal representative as they agreed with the Dill boatmen that wholesale trawling off Dill would damage Dill's image as a mecca for anglers. The association also instructed lawyers to act on their behalf. All this was bound to cost a lot of money, so they decided to start a weekly tote and a member of the association had the job of collecting the weekly subs, drawing the number and distributing the prizes. The first two days of the hearing were heard at Maidstone. A number of Dill boatmen travelled there each day and evidence was given on both sides. Hoteliers, restaurant owners, traders and councillors came and gave evidence to help the Dill boatmen, including the town's fishing clubs. A written on the day statement describing the reason why it was important for Dill to be left free from the trawlers was kept for each hearing. The boatmen made their statement and were questioned by Folkestone's legal representatives. After two days at Maidstone, there were still people to give evidence and a further hearing was arranged. This took place some weeks later and was held at Folkestone. All the evidence was taken and the government minister, who was to decide the rescinding of the rule concerning the length of the vessel, told the Dill boatman that he would give them his findings at a later date. Both sides had to find a huge amount of money to pay for the legal representations. 
the deal in Warmer Fishermen's Association bill came to over £1,000. The boatmen's efforts were in vain, and quite a long time after the hearing, they were informed that the Kent and Essex Sea Federation Committee new regulations were going to stand in place. The deal boatmen made a few more protests, including a trip to London to see some top civil servants, but it was of no avail. Commercial fishing by the large Folkestone trawlers continued, and the place beds were eventually fished out. With the demise of Dill's angling fleet, it will never be known if the place will ever be found in large quantities in the waters off Deal again. Another part of the history of Deal and its boatmen has now faded into the forgotten realms of time.